All right, so we're working on the Suburban today. And what we're doing, I had actually ordered a set of these uh, kicker. These are CS35. I uh, picked these up for the uh, truck. And since I had them, I figured I would check to see if I could make them work for the D-pillars in the Suburban. These are the D-pillar panels. Of course, this is the D-pillar. You got A-pillar, B-pillar, C-pillar, D-pillar. Um, and the way these panels come off, you just grab hold of this top one here, and it's got some clips that pop down. So if you just pull, kind of pull evenly on both sides so you don't break the panel. And you really only have to pop like the first two. I did the first two on each side. And then you can slip this kind of out from under it and get your fingers. I actually did a video, or I thought I was doing a video, but I was out of memory. It started the video and then it quit about as soon as it started of pulling this off. So you basically just kind of grab it and pull and they'll pop and work your way down. And then... Um, then I grabbed up here at the top, once the sides popped off, and I was able to uh, pop it like that and pull those two out. And then the speaker itself just has one little push pin that holds it, and two little clippies. Or not clips, but just these little things you bend out of the way and then the speaker comes out. So what we're doing, we're upgrading from this, and this is the Bose, this thing does have the Bose system. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm gonna upgrade all the speakers in here because eventually I am gonna get rid of the Bose system. And the all the Bose speakers are uh, two ohm speakers. And so when I replace the head unit, uh, two ohm speakers are a little hard on a head unit. Uh, most uh, most head units aren't 2 ohm stable so we're going to replace all the speakers with 4 ohm speakers. I have no idea how they'll sound with the Bose system but uh, it won't be in here much longer. So the first ones I'm doing is the D-pillars and like I said I had ordered these for the truck and since I had them I figured I would see if I could fit them. So last night, I pulled this side off, and when I did, I didn't even look too much at the metal, because I saw how the speaker was mounted. So I pulled the speaker off, and this is kind of what I had come up with. I still needed to do a little bit more trimming, but basically, the speaker would go like that, and then two screws, so you have to put two holes, and I actually had it mounted. When I came out here to see how it fit, I'll show you what I found. I had kind of looked at it, but it had this insulation in here, like this, this insulation piece. So when I was looking at it, just popped this off, and I was like, you know what? That hole right there. I wasn't too happy with the way it was mounted in that plastic. That plastic's real soft, and these speakers are a little hefty. But what I did find was that these pretty much perfectly fit in that hole there. Like I said, these are three and a half inch speakers. So that's what I decided to do. I'm going to mount them into the metal here. And of course that hole right there was where the original, I guess the magnet would have sat for the original speaker, which is pretty much right in there. So it's, it lines up perfectly with that hole. So instead of having this trimmed out like it is right here, I'm going to trim a little bit more of it out just to get it out of the way. And like I said, that's what it originally looked like. So I'll just trim some more of it out uh, between a blade and cutters. 
I'll just trim it out and get it out of the way. We'll drill us two holes, mount the speaker in there, and we should be good. And we're going to clip these ends off of these wires, and we will wire up our speaker leads. And what I I made some base blockers in with the uh, speaker leads here. This is a 47 microfarad uh, capacitor, 100 volt. I was actually looking for a 50, but uh, couldn't find one, at least at the local store. And all I had for 47, and these are uh, non polarized, by the way. So they're, uh, you know, positive and negative are on either side. It doesn't matter. Most capacitors have a positive side and a negative side. This one doesn't. You can do it either way. So for uh, audio stuff like this, where you're doing, using them as a base blocker, you want to use these non-polarized capacitors. But um, putting this in line on the positive wire, and I'll tape this up a little better. Like I said, uh, these... Uh, aren't the ideal capacitors but it's all they had in the value I needed for these speakers so I'll and then once it's in there I mean it's really not it's gonna be in this panel here so it's not like it really matters once it's in there but uh, I'll tape these up I didn't have heat shrink tubing big enough to slip over the whole thing so I'll just use some electrical tape over that and then we have the negative Side, and I will connect these to the stock wires and we'll get these speakers mounted up and we'll see how it sounds I have no idea like I said um, we're pretty much by going from 2 ohm speakers to 4 ohms we're pretty much uh, cutting the power in half um, coming from the amplifier so you almost double, going from like a 4 ohm to a 2 ohm, you almost double your wattage. It just depends on the, the amplifier. But So by going from 2 ohm to 4 ohm, we'll probably cut the wattage in half, but we'll just see how it, how it goes. And I've ordered some uh, two-way speakers for the uh, passenger side door, or the... the passengers doors the second row and then I've got some picked out for the uh, some components for the front and we'll eventually replace those so like I said three and a half inch speakers fit perfectly in here so if uh, most of the reading you read um, people ask what size speakers to put in here and most people say uh, they're like two and a half inch speakers. Just disconnect them and don't worry about them. You really can't hear them anyway. But like I said, I've got kids. They watch movies, and I play the movies through the rear speakers. And uh, like I said, you know, when you've got somebody in the third row, you want the sound for them also. So I wanted to keep speakers back here. And if you want to keep speakers back here, if you're upgrading your speakers. Uh, use some three and a half inch speakers. Like I said, these are Kicker CS35s, three and a half inch, four ohm, and they fit perfect. They uh, they're not too deep. So let's get those mounted up. And you know what? I might once I get one side mounted up, I may hook up the uh, the other side, and we'll see if we can tell a difference in the sound between the two. Uh, I probably won't put the panel back on, but I'll at least just kind of plug this speaker up and kind of shove it in the hole so you can hear. So there's one installed. Um, it was a little bit tight here, just a hair, and instead of wedging it in there, I took a round file and just kind of uh, hit the edges of the uh, hole just a little bit just to open it up a little bit just to here and 
you could use a Dremel or something, but I didn't want to drag an extension cord out here, so I just touched it up with that a little bit. It worked. Cut the this part off of that went in there and drop this one in. My wire runs into here and then runs up to the back of the speaker. Uh, we got enough clearance to get the uh, cover on. I still got to trim the cover out just a little bit more, but I figured what I would do is go ahead and I'll drop that back in there and we're just gonna set this thing. I guess that's not a fair comparison. I'll uh, drop the bows back in here and kind of put it back up in there so we can just listen to see what the difference is. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and button up this side and uh, we'll see what it sounds like. So I just finished trimming that out and that's what it looks like. Don't have to remove all of it, just making sure there's none in the way of the speaker. And I mean, it's got plenty of clearance. It would have had a clearance even if I wouldn't have cut it out, but some of it was kind of shrouded around the hole and I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, we didn't have anything uh, interfering with the sound quality. So. That's as far as I'm going to uh, trim it out, and let's snap this cover back in place.
I feel like the uh, bass blocker is about right. Um, once I got both of the speakers in, they just need some more power pushed into them. There's just not much going to them. And uh, they actually sound pretty good. They have really good highs. And because um, the only way to get this sub woken up, um, I do have the bass all the way up. And in the front, the trebles aren't, all, the tweeters aren't all that bright. So I've got the treble all the way up. And uh, so that really, uh, these scream, these, these tweeters scream back here because the treble's all the way up. So this one right here I've got just temporarily wired up with no bass uh, blocker in it. And it gets a little bit more bass to it, but not much more. Let me get the light on. So we're going to leave the base blockers in, um, once I put some more power to it, it'll be nice to have them, and uh, we probably won't put base blockers in any of the door speakers, uh, the four of those will be uh, six and a half, and I think they can handle the base, especially since my sub is only a six and a half, so um, anyway, I think that's where we're going to leave off for today. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, but uh, this side's just like I did the other side, so anyway, thanks for watching.